get my thumb out of the way there. Hi, kids. Your dear Uncle Birch, and it occurred to me that while, uh, while doing all my many, many videos over the last couple of years, I started to do uh, videos, several videos on the witch's tools. I did cover several of the witch's tools in the, uh, in the intro to witchcraft series, but it occurs to me that I never covered the broom, the classic witch's tool. Um, now, this is one that I made. Uh, just finished it up today, and it'll be out on the uh, it'll be out on the showroom floor uh, by later today. Probably going to retail around seventy five dollars. Nice, nice, uh, nice besom. A traditional besom is a uh, an ash branch, birch bristles, and it's tied together with willow. Now, if you've ever tried that. Willow's not really that good for tying. <laughs> so, but I did see somebody do it once. They did it with twine, and then they wrapped the willow around it. Turned out really nice. It's the only time I've seen anybody do it totally traditionally. Um, uh, it's hard to do a lot of things totally traditionally, so we substitute. We do it with whatever we can. And um, now, first thing you should know is a broom goes this way. Up, up. Never store the broom down. Let's the power out. Now look, if you look around the store here, you'll notice those brooms, which hopefully you can see them, bristles up. This broom here, let's see if we can find it in the corner. I sure hope you can see that bristles up. Bristles up. Standard way of, of doing a, a protection like this broom here is done. We sweep the negativity out the door. Then, we wrap it thrice. Then we stand it up, either against the back of the door or nearby, like that broom down there. So that's one of our protection brooms down there. Uh, I did mention a broom is called a besom, but that, that's one of the things you, that you gotta realize. So, now I know some of you wanting to fly on your broom. That's just silly. Uh, we would, if I, we could fly on brooms, we wouldn't need to do a whole lot else. If I could just fly around places, I wouldn't need to do, you know, money spells or anything. I'd, you know, I'd be like Kiki's Delivery Service, flying around on my broom. Um, so that's just silly. Um, there is a lot of belief that, uh, there were some old, uh, folk magics for agriculture. And, uh... Probably around the planting rituals, Beltane, uh, maybe even uh, spring equinox. Um, they would go down to the fields and they would get on their brooms and they would get on their rakes. They would get on their shovels, whatever they had. And they would straddle them like a hobby horse and jump really high. I mean, there was a whole dance going along with it, but a big part of the dance was jumping as high as you can go, as high as you can go while straddling your broom. Uh, and the belief was you were teaching the plants. You're telling the plants how high you wanted the plants to grow. Agricultural magic. Um, somehow that gets misinterpreted in these, as these witches uh, flying. I don't know if it was a, a painting or a depiction of them on the brooms jumping up high, but uh, yeah, witches don't fly on brooms. Um, there was some historical evidence that uh, some witches anointed their brooms with uh, flying ointment and straddled them and danced on them and, and that kind of thing. And the witches of old oft were practicing naked. Now, witches' flying ointment is uh, traditional witches' flying ointment, which they're using, was three different types of poison, at least. But three traditional types of poison that simulated three different types of the death process. And so you just kind of have a little piece of each of those pieces of the death process, but not enough to actually kill you. Because it was an ointment. You used it topically. You rubbed it on your skin. As long as you didn't have a cut or an opening on your skin, you wouldn't get a uh, deadly dose of poison. Now, straddling a broom doused with uh, flying ointment um, would probably get it into some body cavities and uh, either would kill you or you'd have a hell of a psychedelic trip <laughs> and you might have thought you were flying. Um, so that may have happened. That may have happened. There may have been some, some belief to that. But brooms, 
Besoms are used for sweeping. In a lot of traditions, um, for the circle casting, there's a, there's a cleansing process. There's a salt and water. You've seen that, sprinkling salt and water around. You've seen the incense taken around. That's fire and air, so sensing and aspurging. But then the next step for a lot of people will be sweeping. They sweep the ritual circles, sweeping away all negativity, all evil, all bad luck, that kind of thing. So a broom is used for sweeping, but as witches, our tools are usually not used for mundane things here on earth. We are sweeping the etherical. We are sweeping the spiritual. Uh, and a lot of people use the broom in their daily ritual practice. We find it more often in a hand fasting, a witch's uh, wedding. Traditionally, a witch's wedding, a hand fasting, was a year and a day. Most traditionally, it happened on Lamas. Uh, August 1st, because that is when Lou the Sun married Aru, the Earth, uh, in Ireland, at the very least. Um, and same kind of thing, what we'll see in, in a hand fasting after all, all the words are said and the different pieces of the ritual are done, the, uh, the priest or priestess sweeps the path of the couple, sweeping away negativity, evil, bad luck. Uh, anything that would get in the way of their happy marriage. They're sweeping that away. And then the last thing is the jumping the broom. And there's still other cultures on earth still practicing that way in a lot of places in Africa. They still jump the broom for part of their wedding ritual. Uh, here in America, just uh, I have not seen it, but just a few years ago there was a movie came out called Jumping the Broom, and it was about uh, getting married, from what I understand, although I know nothing else about the movie. Um, that's another place we'll see it. We will commonly see brooms in hand fastings. It's, uh, other than tying the hands together, it's one of the things you pretty much have to have. Um, so it is an extra. Not all traditions use the broom anymore, but... Uh, Maybe if people like me do videos on the broom and people hear more about the broom, maybe people will use them more as uh, a lot of the ritual tools that uh, were classics, uh, they become less used over time because less people know about them, less people are talking about them. And that's the thing on the broom. So merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again, y'all.